We are still remaining in SAMS. This is our last lesson of kind of here. Yeah? Uh, and in this lesson, we're going to solve one more example. And in the process, I'm going to arrive into the definition of integration. Okay? So we, we, the, we decide to choose another function, x squared plus 1, this third parabola. And we're going to find, calculate the remain, remain sum, okay? or in other words, the area between 2 and 6. Okay? So these are boundaries. And what I'm not going to specify right now, okay? so I'm going to say a is equal to b is equal to 6, but I'm not going to specify the n. n was the number of blocks I had. Okay? Remember, the more blocks I use, okay? the more accurate the area I'm going to estimate. Okay, so I'm going to leave n as n. I'm not going to give it a number. That's a cunning plan. Okay, I'll come back to that. There's a cunning plan behind behind this. So we'll, we'll figure out later. Okay, so what's the first thing? Okay, the first step, I need to find the width, the width of each block. Okay, so um, uh, the width of each block is basically not, I've got x, y, x, 2, x, 3, all these x's, yeah? okay? And the width is uh, x2 minus x1, or x3 minus uh, x2, and we're going to call them, I didn't call them before like that, but I'm just going to call them delta x, okay? Delta xi, okay? The width of each block, okay? It's the difference between two x's, okay? Now, we had a formula for that, delta xi, each one of these, this is delta xi, is uh, b minus a divided by n. Okay? Remember, that was the formula we had at the rate of integration. Okay? So I've got b and a, okay? so it's 6 minus 2 over n, it is 4 over n. And, and this time I don't have n, I don't know what the value of n, so I'm just leaving it like that. Okay. Next step, okay, that was the first step. Find the width. Next step, I want to find out xi. Okay? So xi, if you remember, again we had a formula, okay? It's basically, uh, what was it? Uh, it's a plus i b minus n over n, not b minus n, b minus a over n. Am I right? I think I'm right, okay? Yeah, okay. So a I know is 2, two uh, i is just i, B minus A is 4, so it's 4i over n. Let's just check, 4i over n. Perfect, okay? So that's the xi, okay? Now, using that xi, what I'm really after is f of the xi. Because remember, we just, what we're trying to do, we calculate the area of each block and then adding it up, okay? So the, to calculate the area, I need the width. Now I need the height. What is the height? The height is the y value at that specific x. Okay, so first I have to find out an expression for the x, and now I'm going to substitute that instead of the x over here. So fxi is going to be 2 plus 4i over n, all that squared, plus 1. Okay, so we're going to start writing how much that is. It's going to be 4 plus times 4 is 8, so 16i over n plus 16i squared, don't forget i squared is not equal minus 1, okay, it's not an imaginary number, divided by n squared, okay, let's see if I've got it right, uh, oh hang on, plus the 1, plus the 1, okay, so I'm just going to add that one, 1 to the 4 and I'll get, I've got 5 plus 16i over n, plus 16n squared, i squared, fantastic, okay? Now, I'm in position to find out the area, okay? What is the area? The area, okay, I'll write squiggly line, squiggly line, okay? Is estimated as the sum of i from 1 to n, and I don't know what the n is yet, okay? Right? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the area of each, um, uh, what do you say? Of, just a second, just a second, yeah, of each, basically of each, uh, the, sorry, I'm going to add up the area of each block, which is basically your height times the width, okay? So I'm going to write like that, I've never 
never really wrote, nothing I wrote in the delta xi before. Yeah, until now. Okay? So it's the area of each block. It's the height of a block and the width of a block. The height of a block and the width of a block. Okay, I'll just pause here for a second. Okay. So at this point, if I want to find out what the Riemann sum, I really need to, to give the value of n. Or like let's say there's 10 blocks, let's say there's 20 blocks, let's say there's 100 blocks. And what I'm really after here, okay, I'm really after the definition of integration. So you see, I said the area, we usually we until now we just calculate the estimated area. Okay? So now I want to actually calculate the area. Okay? How would I turn that squiggly line? Let me write a little bit underneath. Okay? If I want to calculate correctly, exactly, okay? We, I'm kind of prompting you and preparing you for this. Okay? What are we going to do? Okay? This is the same process. Okay? Exactly everything I need to do here is the same. But I need to take a limit. What do I need, okay, what do I need n, the limit of n to be? n, okay, the more blocks I have, the more accurate it's going to be, right? If I make more and more, more accurate, uh, more blocks, okay, it's going to, the area will be very similar to the one below. So in other words, the n needs to go to infinity. I need to take this Riemann sum in the uh, limit where n goes to infinity. But the other thing that happens, as I squeezing these blocks together and making more and more blocks. As I said, I'm squeezing these blocks together. In other words, the width of the blocks, delta xi, also, or not also, it becomes zero, it approaches zero. So I've got two limits here. The n must go to infinity, and the delta xi goes to zero. And it's kind of like a battle. If I make the delta xi zero, close and close to zero, that means the width is close to zero. Now, if the width is close to zero, then the, the block has an area zero, but on the other hand, I'm adding more and more blocks. So yeah, it's true. The area of each block is we call infinitesimal. Okay, it's, it's tiny. It's like almost zero, pretty much. But I've got infinite number of blocks. So overall, when I'm adding infinite terms, but each one of them is, is pretty much zero, then I can get a number which is not zero, not infinity. Okay. So let's see what that's going to look like. I'm just going to make some space. So I've just moved the values of f and delta x over there, and I'm going to try to calculate the accurate area under the graph. Finally, okay, so I'm going to take the limit where n is infinity and delta x is approaching zero, and I'm going to do the sum from i from 1 to n, remembering n is approaching infinity, and I'm going to write fxi, which is this, okay, just calculate it together, right? 5 plus 16 over n i plus 16 over n squared i squared for that time delta x i which is 4 over n. Okay, so what I'm gonna have, um, yeah, let's split it. So this was all inside here. Okay, so as I did before, what I'm gonna do instead of having something here and then I need to sum it when i equal 1, i equal 2, i equal 3, i equal 4. I'm going to sum each of these terms separately. Okay? So we're going to write limit. Okay? So I'll just put this little white flag here. Limit. N approaches infinity. Delta x i approaches 0. Okay? And I'll put the brackets here. And I'll write uh, sigma i from 1 to n. 5, I'm going to multiply that. That by that. Okay? So 5 times 4. So I can count 5 times 4, so it would be 20 over n. Okay? So I'm timing it in time. Okay? Plus sigma i from 1 to n. 60, 16 times 4 is 64. Yeah. 64 divided by n squared i. Okay? Just multiply it over. Plus sigma from 1 to n. 4 times 60 is 4 times 16 is 64 divided by n cubed. That should have been squared. Yeah. So that's I squared. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the equation out. But you know, I just, I'll, I'll do a magic here. Just check out the magic, the magic. Okay. Let me just figure out where to put it. Okay. So check this. Abra, Madaba. Stay mix. Look at that. 
We love knowing how cool is that. Okay? So what, what is this thing? What are the vagina here? What are the eyes here? Okay? We've got uh, sums, okay? Sums of, with indexes from 1 to n. And uh, so we use these formulas, right? But before we use these formulas, what I should really do is get rid of anything which is not i. Okay, because I've got constant time high, constant time high. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. Limit. N approaches infinity. Delta H approaches zero. Okay? I'll get to 20. That, this, this I know is going to be confusing. I've got 20 over N. N, I know we don't know what N is, but N is constant. Okay? The I is the variable. I, the index runs from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to N. So N is always N. N could be 1,000 or 500, but it doesn't change. So it is a constant, so we can get it up. So I'm getting it up here, so it's going to be 20 over n, sigma i from 1 to n. And what do I have to write here? Just 1. Okay? So I'm just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way to n. Plus 64 over n squared. It's constant. The only thing that changes here is the i. The i is the only thing that changes inside the sigma. So I'm going to get this one, the 64 over n squared, out of the sigma. I equal 1 to n, and now I've got i. That means this sigma is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, yeah? And over here, I'm going to say, get 64 over n cubed. I from 1 to n, and here I have i squared. That means 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. Okay? Now I'm going to use these great cool formulas to evaluate each one of these sums. So I'm going to write it here. Limit. N approaches infinity. Delta x approaches zero. Um, 20 over n. What is sigma 1 from i to n? It's n. I multiply by n. Okay, you can see it's going to happen there. Okay? Plus 64 over n squared. What is sigma i? n squared plus n. Woo! Working hard here. n squared over 2. Plus, I'm copying from this, plus n over 2. Okay, instead of each one of these sigmas, it's being replaced with that formula, which we will prove next year. Okay? Plus, 64 over n cubed, i, instead of sigma i squared, I've got n cubed over 3, plus n squared over 2, plus n over 6. Good, okay. Right, I'm going to pause here, make some space. Somewhere, I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm going to go over from here to there. Then carry on calculating the area. So taking the limit, n approaches infinity, delta h approaches zero. So we're actually calculating the area, the exact area for once. Okay, 20 over n times n is just 20. Okay, 20. Plus, right, 64 over n squared times n squared. 64 divided by 2 is 32. 32, the n squared cancel out. And then 64 over n squared times n over 2 is going to be plus 32 over n, right? n divided by n squared, I've got n at the bottom. Okay, now I'm moving on to here. Plus 64 divided by 3. What is 64 divided by 3? Yeah, hold this, it's, it's not a whole number. 64 over 3. N cubed divided by N cubed, I side of it. Okay, 64 divided by 2 plus 32, but now by N squared divided by N cubed, so I'm left up with that 1 N here. And last one, 64 divided by 6. What is 64 divided by 6? Okay, it's going to be 32 over 3. Okay, so it's not going to be a whole number again. Right, I'm dividing both by 2, so it's 32 divided by 3. But I have also n divided by n cubed, so uh, I have to write 3n squared. Okay, done. Right. What are we doing now? Let's have a look. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do it in one step. So can I do it in one step? I can do it in one step. Now, when everything is fine here, I've simplified everything, we got to go back to the limit. And look, what is the limit? Okay, well, I've got a whole bunch, I've got some here to do with n. But what is n? n is infinity, isn't it? Okay, n approaches infinity. So anywhere I have divided by n, divided by infinity, or infinity squared, that obviously, the 
i is a certain thing so this term the by 30 to the power by 20 is zero 30 to the power by 20 is zero 30 to the power by 3 times 20 squared is definitely zero so the only thing i've got here is this okay it's it's 52 okay 52 plus this those two terms plus 64 over 3 64 over 3. So the answer, according to uh, these guys, let's just see that it's right. Okay, so I'm going to put the divide by 3. 3 times 52 is 156. 156 plus 64. The answer should be 220 divided by 3. Okay, that's the answer I'm giving. Okay, now, okay. Big deal. Well, the big deal is this is the exact, if I'm right, okay? Well, if I didn't make a mistake, but this is the exact area. This is the exact, it's an equal, not a squiggly equal, it's a straight equal. Because remember, we made n approach infinity. We use infinite blocks. And we actually got a number, we made it. Okay? Now, what I gotta do, I gotta now try and calculate that area using the definite integral. Remember, we told you three lessons ago when we learned about the definite integral that the area okay, is equal to the definite integral between two, between a and b, fx dx. In other words, I take the function, in this case it was x squared plus one, I put it inside the integral sign, I do antiderivative on it, and then I find the definite integral. So let's see if that works, okay? So in this case, it's going to be, what is A and B? A is two and six, okay? Fx is x squared plus one dx, okay? So, great. We're gonna find out how much that is, okay? So it's gonna be x squared, what's the antiderivative of x squared? x cubed over three. What is the antiderivative of one plus six, okay? And I have to put that in the box. Okay? And I put the two uh, border, border A and B, okay? which is two and six. And then I substitute. Okay? So I'm going to substitute six cubed over three plus six minus two cubed over three plus two. Okay? All right? Let me just clear out a little bit more space. So we're going to find out how much it is. I'm going to write it down here. So that's down there. So six cubed. Ooh, six cubed. Six cubed. Hold on. I've got to make some mistakes here. Yeah, 216. 216 divided by 3 plus 6 minus 2 cubed is 8 over 3 plus 2. Okay? Now, I'm just going to put it in the calculator if you don't mind, okay? 200, uh, what I'll do is like this. 8 over 3. Put that in. Plus 2. Multiplying it by minus 1. And just putting it all in the calculator. Plus 6. Plus 216. Divided by 3. Aha! Okay? You're getting an amazing. 220 over 3. Okay. So if you still have a clue what I'm doing and you didn't get lost somewhere along the way, I just showed to you, I didn't prove to you, I showed to you that if I calculate the Riemann sum okay, between 2 and 6 of this function, okay, if I calculated the areas I learned using Riemann sum, and I demanded, I demanded that n goes to infinity. In other words, I use infinite block. I got the same answer as I would have when I used the definite integral. Okay? The definite integral, which I just told you to accept that if you use the definite integral, you'll get the area under the graph. And I show you that at least in this example, you get the same answer. So I didn't prove it, okay? but I showed that to you. In fact, guys, the definition, okay, the definition of the integral is exactly that. The definition of the integral, okay, 
of the function from these two points, from a point A to a point B, okay, is exactly that Riemann sum. Okay? We just highlight it. Okay? What is the integration of a function from A to B? It's basically an infinite sum of the values of a function, okay, the values of a function from points A to point B every time multiplying by the width of the block. What does that mean? Take a function, that curve, okay, multiply the value of the function, the y value, by dx. What is that dx? Now you all clear understand where did that dx come from? That dl of dx is a poor delta x, difference between x's, which I then demanded it to be equal to zero. Okay? I, let, I took the limit where it goes approaches zero. So when delta x approaches zero, we call it dx. Okay? So I took these blocks, narrowed them, squeezed them into an infinitesimal, infinitesimal, infinitesimal width, okay? and multiplied every time by the value of the function. So I took the width times the, the, the height, the width times the height, the width times the height. This is what this integration sign tells you. tells you to sum up the y value times the delta x over and over and over and over again, okay, infinite number of times until you reach uh, the edge. Okay? And that's integration. Okay? That's the definition of integration. What I still need to prove to you is that sign, when I do that sign, why can't I use the uh, antiderivative? See, when I did that sign, I just told you that when I put this integral sign over that function, I just need to do the antiderivative, the opposite to derivative. So x squared becomes x cubed over 3. Okay, so if I do the derivative of x cubed over 3, I'll get x squared. 1 becomes x. Okay? That I didn't prove to you. I didn't prove to you why the integral of a function is basically the antiderivative. That's why I need to prove to you why the integral of a function is basically the antiderivative of that function. And you don't need to know that right now. I did have a look at the book, and I think there is, I think officially it's in grade 12. But I'm going to add another little video, separate video, optional video. You don't need to watch it, uh, where I will explain. It's not going to take too long, five minutes, maybe a little bit more, not more than that, where I explain why the integral of function is the antiderivative of that function. But that's an optional one, okay? Right, guys, have a lovely day, and now you can do exercise 3.1, okay? Cheerio.